Welcome to Moments with Marianne. This is your host, Marianne Pastana. And we're here today with special guest, Mary Kay Savaris, who's here to share with us her new novels, Tigers Love Bubble Baths and Obsession Perfume, Who Knew? Followed by the first book in the Star Writers trilogy series, The Girl in the Tall Wallpaper. So are you ready to embark on an adventure where there are twists and turns on every page? Well, today, Mary Kay Savarese is here to share with us just that. The U.S. Review of Books said at moments the story evokes Doctor Who and a wrinkle in time, though the plot is unlike anything the reader is likely to have read. So Mary Kay Savarese is a best-selling, award-winning, traditionally published author and speaker who is known for her quirky titles. Her debut novel, titled Tigers Love Bubble Baths and Obsession Perfume, Who Knew?, is a mystery romance with a supernatural twist, and it garnered eight awards. Her recent novel, The Girl in the Tall Wallpaper, is the first of the Star Writers trilogy. She recently won the New York City Big Book Award for Fantasy, as well as an International Royal Dragonfly for Fantasy and Young Adults. So let's welcome to the show, Mary Kay Savarese. Thank you so much, Marianne. Such a pleasure to be here with you. Well, what an honor it is to have you here and to talk about your novels. I have to tell you, diving into your books, I absolutely love them. I can see why they're award-winning. So let's start with your first book, Tigers Love Bubble Baths and Obsession Perfume. Who knew? What inspired you to write that? Oh, I would be absolutely thrilled and honored. Um, Tigers Love Bubble Bath and Obsession Perfume. Who knew? It was actually my fourth manuscript. Marianne, I am an overnight success, a 10-year overnight success. My goal was to become traditionally published. And as we know in the world of authors and trying to become published and trying to get into a publishing house, it's rejection after rejection after rejection. And finally, with at that 10-year mark, I was approached by a small publishing house, and they were happy to pu- traditionally publish Tiger's Love Bubble Bath an obsession perfume, who knew? And um, Marianne, I am known as a, uh, I am known for my quirky titles, as you can see with the title of the Tiger's book. And I would love to share with your audience the backstory of the title. Oh, I'd love to hear that. Um, Several years ago, I visited a wildlife reserve in St. Augustine, Florida, and this is an old folks home for big cats, big cats, lions, tigers, cougars, um, jaguars. And at the end of the tour, I come up to this very thin cage and behind it is a vat. 15 feet wide, five feet high, overflowing with bubbles. And I wonder what this is for. There is a wildlife handler standing on a ladder, also behind a thin cage. And out walks this incredible 600-pound, beautiful Siberian tiger, walks across this plank, looks as though he is taking off a robe, and slips into the this vat of bubbles and sticks his tongue out. The wildlife handler sprays obsession perfume on his tongue, and it looked like he was having a cocktail. And I stood there with my mouth open, Marianne, and I couldn't believe it. And I said, that is the title of my next novel. And the reason I chose that title, and it became a, very much a metaphor, because these big cats are tossed aside from cable shows, movies. People had them as pets at that time, but the laws changed because of Tiger King and the advocates that went after people having tigers. And um, I just fell in love with that metaphor, because as they are tossed aside like an old shoe, 
so was my protagonist, Angie Pantera. After 25 years of marriage, she was tossed aside like an old shoe, and she had to start all over again, which is not necessarily easy. But uh, my poor character, I put her through the mill because for her, she was involved in not just one murder, but one murder after another. Is she responsible for them or will she be next? Ooh, that has me kind of on my seat. And I've got to tell you, reading the book did as well. And you interweave so many parts to it. I mean, there's this whole part that goes, in, I think, in many parallels that talks about um, a nursing home. Yes, because what I did was um, I, it's intertwined with the spiritual or the supernatural. So what happens is the character um, does begin a new life within this nursing home, and she's the social director. So she agrees. To she, she promotes wishes. She has these beautiful, big, big dandelions, and she promotes the um, the people that live there to make wishes. Well, it's where these wishes go, Marianne. That takes us on one twist after another, which is what I just love to put into a book. And this is a mystery romance intertwined with the um, spiritual or supernatural. Such an exciting book. I was just so surprised on how the twists and turns became the book that it is. What was your writing process like? Um, my writing process is that something in my life um, inspires me with the tw- a title, and it's a quirky title. And I start there. And um, for years, I've always had these like ideas for stories. Always, I want to get something going that's a new mouse trap, and just twist it a little here, twist it a little there. So it begins with that quirky title, and I generally have an idea for um, an ending, but I don't have that whole sandwich portion, that whole inside, that roast beef, that turkey of that sandwich yet. So the next point is um, I have a general idea of how I want to proceed and then the characters. And I begin the characters, Marianne, in my mind, not that I'm walking around. I mean, some authors do. I do become my characters. You have to live them. What motivates them? And I do that in my mind. And I find that so rewarding because then I put them down on paper. And for me, that is so much fun. And truly, Marianne, I am humbled and thrilled to say that Tiger's Love Bubble Bath and Obsession Perfume, who knew, won eight awards. And um, it was an ebook bestseller. It's still there. And um, it was just so much fun writing this. And, um, you know, many things while this book was published, we were in um, COVID time. And so Tiger King became very, very popular. So people were very interested in tigers and bubble baths. And this is absolutely true. They love bubble baths. They can sit in a vat of bubbles all day. And the pheromones, the obsession perfume calms them down, just like relaxation. Wildlife handlers spray it on rocks in the wild. So people are fascinated by this whole fact. And the other important thing I just did want to get out is because of Tiger King, people at that point were allowed to have tigers crazy as pets. And people did. And they ended up not being able to obviously deal with them. And they would be sent to this wildlife reserve in um, St. Augustine, Florida, from around the world. But activists did play a role and they did get that law changed. But just in the United States, because still around the world, people do have them as pets. Well, I find it so fascinating that you have this bit of information that comes And how it just goes so well with the story that either you're planning to write or in the middle of writing and everything intertwines. 
what do you want readers to take away from this book? I know we've talked about just how large cats are really not household pets and and they shouldn't be. But what do you want readers to take away from your book? Well, again, the story is very much about starting all over again. And you can start all over again at very at any age. Um, my my protagonist starts over again, um, you know, during uh, it, she's in her 40s. She's starting all over again. And what I want people to take away is as one door closes, that window or that other door will open up for you and it'll be even more beautiful than before. I love that. What a positive note that book brings. It, it just makes you want to read it and reread it. Thank you. You are welcome. Well, and so let's toggle over to your next book. So I understand you have a trilogy going on here. I do. Now, Marianne, at this point, you would think I am a, tra- I'm with a small publishing house. I am traditionally published and the book has won eight awards. It's been, it's on ebooks, um, best selling list. I approached my publisher with the idea of a trilogy. Trilogies that this was a couple of years ago and trilogies were really out there. Publishers wanted series and a trilogy is a little bit different than a series. A series you, you continue with those characters, just put them into different situations. A trilogy, you can take a theme, which is what I did from the first book. And I put that into the second, which will be published in the very, very near future. I'm just throwing that in. But again, Marianne, I love quirky titles. And the um, second book that was traditionally published, um, my, my original publisher did not want to do a trilogy. So I went back out there into the um, world of publishing, and I was able to find an all women's, um, again, a new publishing house, and they were very interested in a trilogy. So um, again, I am just thrilled um, to be with them now, and they are so empowering and so wonderful in digging our house. And um, that's how this trilogy began again with a quirky title so and it the trilogy is called the star writers trilogy and basically what that is is that um it means it is written in the stars and what it is written in the stars means is that there is a pathway for each one of us a purpose but maybe we haven't realized it yet because um, we are not at that point in time. So the first book of the trilogy is titled The Girl in the Toile Wallpaper. And I have to say, as I do interviews, very much there'll be a big joke, The Girl in the Toilet Wallpaper, because if you plug it in, it may come up as The Girl in the Toilet Wallpaper. But it's The Girl in the Toile Wallpaper. And if I may, I would just love to tell the audience just a little bit about Twal, if I may. I would love to understand more of that. Thank you. Well, Twal is very much a part of our everyday lives. It's been around for centuries, but you may not know it as that word Twal, which is a tongue twister in itself, but it's very much an artistic um, wall covering or a fabric. And what it is, is it's two tones and it tells a story. Now, it's not a mural. A mural is like one scene, but in a toile with these very vibrant colors, it can be anything contemporary. It can be futuristic. It can take you into the past. You can have n- people in it or no people in it, whatever you want, but it's this contrast of colors against a a colored background. And that is in wall covering and it is in fabric. And I just love twelve and I had it in my home. Now I live in Florida, but uh, I lived in Connecticut and in the Northeast, I used a lot of wallpaper to the point where I had so much twelve, I couldn't even sell my house, Marianne, because there was too much of it. 
But um, I would look at my toile and I saw love and betrayal and I saw a story there. And that very much became my second novel, the first of the Star Writers trilogy titled The Girl in the Toile Wallpaper. That is fascinating. Thank you for sharing that with us. I think it's so good to have a little information on what in- just inspires these stories and how that comes together. So can you share a little bit about The Girl in the Twelve Wallpaper with us? Yes. What I do is I take you back to um, a time in Florence and Siena, Italy. And it still exists today, but very much back then um, in the banking world, families told you who you were supposed to marry and you had a loyalty to your family. So my protagonist, Calla Lily, her heart wants what her heart wants. She loves her family dearly and she wants to remain loyal to them. They want her to marry a certain person. Her heart falls in love with somebody else um, and enters a greedy noble who brings in this evil wizard and um, places my protagonist, Calla Lily Montevelli, into the toile wallpaper. Will she remain there forevermore or will she have somebody help her? And then that's the book opens up in the present day and um, it brings us to basically a situation where another major character, she travels to Florence, Italy to remove these famous toiles. And the story just weaves because Marianne, this um, book is a fantasy adventure intertwined with romances. So I bring the reader into the past and into the present. And I weave romances. What I mean by romances is the coming of age for um, one of my main characters, Tyler. And then there's the 20-something, Calla Lily's love and yearning. And she's actually younger than 20, so but it's in that time frame. And then I have the first true love of my other main character, Aunt Meg. And she's the one that's working with the 12. And um, she's young 30 something. And then I have the breakup of a marriage. So that's all weaved with all the twists and turns and the fantasy that I bring in, because I just bring in, um, I bring in these show cats and they play a part. Um, It's all fantasy. But Marianne, I like, I love fantasy because reality for me is too real. (laughs) I love to write about these fantasy adventures and have readers go on these wonderful journeys just to take you away from your everyday life and bring you into um, another world and just weave twists and turns throughout everything. Well, you have a quote in your book that really stuck with me and it says, when you stop dealing in reality, you achieve greatness. So what did you mean by that? Well, that was basically one of the things I do at the beginning of each of the chapters is I write the quirkiest title that you read it and you say, what does that mean? And it really has to do something with the chapter that you are reading. So basically what it's saying is I am taking you out of reality. And once you boom, 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 twist your mind and do this and this, Um, greatness can occur because this is a fantasy and I can bring in these things that happen to my characters. But one of the funniest things is when you work with an editor, you think I would always say, but it's fantasy. I could write anything. No, 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 no. Marianne, I found out there are still rules within fantasy that you have to follow. So it made it a lot of tug and pull with my editor. (laughs) Well, I know you're an award-winning, well-known author. And for our listeners that are probably looking to become an author, what advice would you give them about that? I would say, um, as I said, I am an overnight success. 
a 10 year overnight success. It was something I would always have ideas for. I put it on the back burner. And finally, when um, the kids started to go off to college, I actually sat down and I began to put these ideas on paper and to prove to myself I could write. And one of the things that I did learn and I passing that on, love to pass that on to any um, author is um, if you can see it in your head as a movie, you can put it down on paper and just follow that with dialogue. So it's been a journey for me. But the point is that um, I loved it so much. It's such a passion in my heart to write these stories, to take people on journeys that I didn't give up. And I was dealing with one rejection after another. You have to build a thick skin. And after a while, I would say to myself, so if this doesn't happen, it wasn't meant to be. But I still loved writing the stories. But I stuck with it. And that's the point is, and I never gave up on myself. So don't ever, ever give up on yourself. And I can promise you, if it's a passion of yours and you stick with it, it'll happen for you. And today's market has changed. When I I was submitting my my um, manuscripts, you know, even as much as seven years ago, you um, still self-publishing was taboo, but the world has changed for authors. Self-publishing, you still have to be careful with, um, just, just don't jump into anything, do your research. But now you have co-publishing and you have small publishing houses that have opened up that will look at your work still. So it's like the the whole message is never give up on yourself if it's a passion in your heart. I can promise you it'll happen for you, not overnight, but if you stick with it, it's one stepping stone after another. That's been my experience. So in your books, are they based off of people you know, or is it more of you have these threads of thoughts and ideas that weave together? I, as an author, I walk, walk around with this little notebook and um, I'm always, if I hear a really creative name, something very catchy, I put it in. Something that gives me a quirky title, I write it in there. So um, it's something that, um, you know, those ideas are bubbling there and I try to to work with them in the future. So you talk about and and you mentioned this in your book too that our fate is written in the stars. Yes. So what what do you mean by that? Yes, in um The Girl in the Twelve Wallpaper, which is the first of the Star Riders trilogy, that is the theme that I then take to the second book in the trilogy. It is written in the stars and my characters will say that many times. It's like it's a hope they have, a wish or a prayer. And um, it is written in the stars. It's like we each have a path, a purpose in life. It is written in the stars for us. But we may not be at that point in time yet when it's realized. And I say it so much. After a while, my kids are like, yeah, yeah, mom, tell us again. It's written in the stars. (laughs) But that's like my mantra. (laughs) I think that's a great mantra to have, you know. Well, and for readers of this book, what do you want them to take away from it? What I want you to do is to cozy up. And if you love fantasy, if you love adventure, and you love that intertwined with romances, then this book is for you. And um, I've had incredible reviews. It's already won um, the New York City Big Book Award. It's won several awards. It's won the Royal Dragonfly for fantasy and um, young adult. And so this particular book, um, the reviews were basically for a young adult to older, because I'll just say, oh, yeah, for any age. But um, I bring those characters are those ages where um, it suits a young adult and older. And um, I want you to um, have fun with it and enjoy the journey. And um, it is a fast read. 
and I want you, I take you on twists and turns. I don't want, I'm not, I don't want to be that type of author where you already know where I'm going. I really want to surprise you. So that's what I kind of want you to take away. And I'm trying to take you away from your everyday life and put you into a nice setting and relaxation and just enjoy the fantasy journey I take you on. Well, okay. So I know you have a, the second book is coming out soon. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. So as I approached uh, my new publishing house, um, at that time, I did have the idea for the second book in the trilogy, but it was maybe a third of the way written. And I knew where I was going with the third. Now, um, the third would, that'll be the following year. But in the Girl in the Trois wallpaper, Marianne, my whole purpose was I didn't want to bore the reader. And what I mean by that is, yes, you love the characters. And um, what I wanted to do is have a break in between. So I take a theme, it is written in the stars, and I write the whole second book, um, which is titled The Star Writers Club, based on this theme. Where do you go with something that's titled The Star Writers Club? Well, I take my readers on an ethereal journey, a mythical journey, because what I do is I weave new worlds. I weave the band around heaven. I weave an underworld. Um, you know, in, in a, you know, I cannot sit here and say, oh my gosh, I know what the heavenly world is like. Nobody knows. So what I do is I weave my own world, which is, this is a fantasy adventure, but it's the mythology. I take you on another journey, totally different, but with the theme of the first book. And it actually, believe it or not, as I told my publisher, it all ties in because as there are struggles in the second book between good and evil, chasms open up and holes open up, which allow for the fantasy to continue. And I have to change things in the third book. I bring in the main characters, but the second book plays a big part between the first book and the third book. And that's why I say that it um, it's tucked in between its two earthly bookends. And um, as I mentioned earlier, trilogies can be anything. You can take a character that existed, um, um, introduced in your first book and do something with that character in the second book. And you, it's just, it allows you so much more freedom. So um, that's how I ended up with the Star Writers Club. My goodness, that sounds so exciting. Because I know your first book, it's you talk about being an adventure intertwined with romance. And the second one is a, a, like fantasy with ethereal, yes. is what you were saying? The se well, the first one is a mystery romance, because I have one death after another in the first one. And that's intertwined with the, the supernatural. The second, my second book, The Girl in the Trois Wallpaper, is really a um, fantasy adventure. And it is the trilogy because all three books are fantasy adventures. So if you like science fiction, you're going to like um, this book as well because it works great in the Christian marketplace. It works great for young adults, science fiction, people who love fantasy to just go on a journey. And one of my most favorite things, you always want romance. Um, so you have to have that in, in the book. It, it you know, um, as I was always told by my editor, the, um, the reader becomes the characters in the book. So you have to show, you can't just tell. And you have to allow them to become those characters. The romances are so much fun. Well, I cannot wait for the second book. It sounds just so exciting to have well, that, that. Yep. The, the second book is, is out. 
the girl in the toile wallpaper. And um, you can find my books everywhere, Marianne, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, um, any bookstore. If it's not on the shelf, they'll order it for you. And the oh, second awesome. in the trilogy, the Star Writers Club, will be coming out soon. So what do you want readers to know about the work that you do? Because I, it seems that in many ways, there's a theme or themes that go through your writing. Very much so. I think for each of us, you know, we each have that purpose in life. And we go through life. And, um, you know, you, you deal with everyday life. And I've learned that the ordinary is really extraordinary. And um, again, I just want to take you on this just nice journey to take you away from, you know, the reality that we deal (laughs) with every day and to have fun with it. All my writings are easy reads. And um, and I, as and as I said, if you if you love that fantasy aspect and romance, then then please follow me. And um, I, I if I may, I have a, an author website um, www dot mary m a r y k s a v a r e s e dot com. Please visit my author website and connect with me. I'd love it. Well, Mary, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show with us here today. It's my pleasure. It was so much fun. Well, thank you, Mary Kay Savarese. It's been such an honor to spend this time with you and to talk about your two new novels, Tigers Love Bubble Baths and Obsession Perfume, Who Knew?, followed by the first book in the Star Writers Trilogy series, The Girl in the Twall Wallpaper. Both of Mary's award-winning books are available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all indie retailers. And remember, support our indie bookstores. If you don't see it on the shelf, just ask for them to order it for you. If you'd like to connect with Mary Kay Savarese, visit her website at M-A-R-Y-K-S-A-V-A-R-E-S-E dot com. Make sure to reach out to her and have her speak at your next book club talk. Well, on that note, we're going to pause here for a quick break, and we'll be right back after these messages from our sponsors. Looking for a page turner? Cozy up to a fantasy adventure romance trilogy with The Girl in the Twall Wallpaper by Mary Kay Savarese. The second novel in the Star Writers trilogy, The Star Writers Club, is coming soon. Take the journey. Connect with Mary at www.marykaysavarese.com. Her books are available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all indie bookstores. With Breath Hub, you'll experience the transformative power of breath as it harmonizes your body, mind, and spirit. Recommended by experts in fitness, sports, psychology, and medicine. Meet the scientific way of being well. Breath Hub. Breathe better. Live better. Are you a coffee lover who wants to make a difference? Look no further than Fire Department Coffee, a veteran-owned business that gives back to support first responders in need. Each batch of coffee is freshly roasted right here in the USA by a dedicated team of first responders and coffee experts. So when you enjoy a cup of Fire Department Coffee, you're not only drinking high-quality coffee, you're supporting members of your community. Start your day with a coffee that gives back. Visit FireDepartmentCoffee.com. That's Fire, D-E-P-T, Coffee.com. The book Terminal Cancer is a Misdiagnosis, authored by Danny Carroll, is on sale at Amazon now. Licensed psychologist and psychotherapist Tessa Antia John Guerra commented, This is one of the most empowering books on a topic of cancer you will ever read. Award-winning author T.L. Needham commented, This recommended book can be understood by anyone seeking answers, hope, and alternatives to a terminal diagnosis. Buy it now on Amazon.com. Pandemonium. Fast forward 20 years. A U.S. president seizes control of all U.S. missiles, the power grid, the banking system, and every computer in America as he hides in an underground bunker. 
Pandemonium, a captivating sci-fi thriller where a hidden war, psychics, aliens, artificial intelligence, and transcendental love collide with the latest media technology. Pandemonium, live to all devices. Get your copy on paperback or digital. Free sample at getpsychic.org. Hello, Dr. Cutler here. Do you experience bloating, heartburn, food craving, bowel irregularity, food sensitivities, weight issues? If you do not digest your food, you may be deficient in macronutrients, which your body needs for optimal health. Dr. Ellen Cutler.com teaches that this is an enzyme deficiency. I believe the most important supplement is a full spectrum digestive enzyme, Dr. Ellen's Way Digestive Enzymes. Hear more about it at Dr. Ellen Cutler.com. Internationally recognized and award winning author Judy Goodman works and teaches outside the box of limited thinking. Working with people from every walk of life, her goal is to empower you to be the best you can be, no matter what the challenge is. Born with the gift of seeing beyond our normal vision, she has an extraordinary gift of working with every challenge. Teaching beyond conventional wisdom, her work is described as life-changing. Visit JudyGoodman.com. That's JudyGoodman.com. I'd like to thank Jason Eastwood at Guitarfulness for sharing his inspiring music and talent with us. His music is known worldwide for cultivating atmospheres of harmony, inner peace, and clarity. Visit Jason's website at guitarfulness.com. Join his newsletter, be part of his community, and download his music. Well, we're at the end of our time today. I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in. You've been listening to Moments with Marianne, where we make every moment count. In a single moment, your life can change. Moments with Marianne is a transformative hour that covers an endless array of topics with the best of the best. Her guests are leaders in their fields, ranging from inspirational authors, top industry leaders, and business and spiritual entrepreneurs. Each guest is gifted and a true visionary, a recognized leader in her own work. And while teaching others to develop, refocus, and grow, Marianne will bring the best guest and sometimes a special surprise. Don't miss this. You never know just which moment will change your life forever. Make sure to tune in and visit momentswithmarianne.com for more information.